Have you ever tried to wrap something on an image such as a t-shirt? And it's very difficult to get inside some of those folds and get the right angles, but Adobe dropped some new features last week inside of Split Warp. We're gonna look at that right now. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe, and we're looking at some of the new features from Photoshop last week. Let's look at Split Warp. So here's a photo I grabbed from Adobe stock. And by the way, I'll give you guys a link underneath where you can get this image. And I want to drop a Photoshop logo onto his shirt. So let's go under the library and I've just got a Photoshop logo that I found online. I'm going to hold down the shift key and this will enable me to drag the corner to resize it. And I'm just going to rotate it a little bit. All right, next thing we want to do is change the blending mode. Let's go to something like a multiply. Notice how it's starting to blend in a little bit better and let's take the opacity down a little bit. There we go. So here you can see some of the texture, but the Photoshop logo needs to warp to fit it. Now I've got other tutorials and I'll give you guys a link to the one I've got on displacement maps, but let me show you how to do this easily. Control Command T brings up free transform and we're gonna right click and we're gonna go under warp. Now the warp has been there, but there's some newer features that are available. First thing I want to do is under the grid, we're going to choose a three by three grid, which is going to give us a simple grid to get started with. Now, if you choose the gear icon, you can also change the color. We can change the color of those guides. We can do different things with those to make them more visible. Now let's just drag to start with just kind of warping this a little bit dragging on that grid to try to shape it a little bit. So one of the things we can do is we can drag these points and we can move the individual points. You can grab these little handles to kind of warp the shape. But let me show you something that's new. If we go up the top here and I want to just kind of scoop this a little bit and I drag it down, notice how the other side moves with it. It's always been a problem. So one of the new features is if you hold down the Alt or the Option key and you tap on there, what it does now is it separates it and notice now we can just move that one side. We can do the same thing over here. Alt or Option, and now we can drag it down. So what we've done essentially is converted that point. Now if you right click, you can also see some of the options. This is a convert warp anchor point. If I click on that again, it's going to go back to the regular where both sides work. If I right click, remember this will give us the same option where all of these points can be manipulated individually. And that just gives us a little bit more control over how we want to go with this. Now, if we want to split this, hold down the control or command key and just move over it and notice that we can just create a new one. And why don't I create another one close to it? And then I can just kind of tuck this one underneath and that's gonna give us a little bit of an appearance of a little bit of overlap. Let's see how that's looking. Just click on the background layer and we can see, okay, this is looking quite good. Maybe there's a little bit more work I wanna do smoothing this out and some things. So what do we do? Well, we just simply go back there, hit Control T again or Command T on Mac, right click back to warp and those settings are still there. So I'm going to hold the outer option because I want to smoothen that down. There we go. That looks better. It was not quite working. And then you can pull these down. And if we want to split, of course, once again, Control Command key will enable us to split. If we go down the side, we can go to the top. We can split. If we go in the middle, we can do a double split. And then that enables us just to move these individual points out. I've got more things I want to do with this tool in future tutorials. Let me know if you're interested in that and let me know underneath in the comments if you find these new changes useful. And by the way, guys, if you're new, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Consider subscribing and ring that bell and you won't miss any of my tutorials. And if you like this or get any value out of it, do me a favor and hit that like button. It helps us with the algorithm on YouTube. So anyway, guys, until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.